Hi everybody, so I'm back and walking on this trail. Seems to be a little bit of gnats around today, but getting through the gnats. <laughs> Small little things that try to bother you, but God's bigger than that. So, um, I, I went into this, uh, this, this little mini display and there were some cute turtles and the, some of the other animals and um, reptiles were on some other journey, like for school or whatever. But um, it was interesting to just, you know, see the intricateness of how God speaks to you, even in a way that you're not expecting. And like my God image is the butterfly. And that is how God has spoken to me all these years from being a child all the way up until now, is that butterflies will just show up out of nowhere. And again, here I am looking at this reptile, you know, exhibit and, um, you know, there's snakes and turtles and stuff like that. And, and then all of a sudden there's this brochure that's on, um, a shelf that just, you know, comes into my focus and it's on butterflies and all of these butterflies that were listed were native to this area on the East coast. And, you know, I'm looking at their descriptions and, and going, wow, um, I've had visitations with so many of these different types of butterflies along my journeys of traveling and hiking and walking different trails. And it was just so cool to see them all in this one, you know, color coded brochure. And I'm thinking, wow, God is so amazing that he's made all these different types and species of butterflies. And then I have personally been visited by so many of these beautiful butterflies on my, you know, trails that I've gone through. And the one that was not on this list, which again was really interesting, is the blue morph butterfly. And to the understanding that I understand and the research that I've done on the blue morph butterfly, it's from the Amazon rainforest. And um, so I have a story about the blue morph butterfly and just to give you an idea of just how God works. And again, that this is an example that you know, God is always speaking to you in a language that, you know, that you can understand. Um, so, you know, years ago, I was really active with this um, graphic design business that I had. And the name of my business, um, Design Wing, W-I-N-G. And so I had designed a logo that had the picture of a butterfly um, in the logo. And... You know, as I was going through, somehow, I forget how, but somehow I came across this woman that would take um, butterflies that she was farming. And if they had died along their journey or whatever after the season, she would pick them up and frame them as artwork. And then she would like display them in these display cases. And they would, um, you know, like just be just a beautiful, you know, gorgeous representation of like what this blue morph butterfly it was just so iridescent like royal blue like the sky right now like really bright blue and um so um you know I'm you know look, admiring this particular blue morph butterfly and then I asked her you know is that something that I can purchase or whatever and so she tells me that she does sell some of this as framed artwork so I put an order in and for my clients, whenever they had made a, you know, a significant um, contribution to my business, I would send out these, oh, this, this flower is just so pretty. Look at this flower. It's like so bright yellow. Um, but this, um, this, you know, artwork of the butterfly, I made it an investment and then I would thank my clients with sending out these thank you things and I had all of these like amazing handwritten thank you notes from all of my clients that were just like that was like the most in interesting gift I've ever received I've never seen a butterfly up close and to look at the iridescence and the shininess and the sparkle in the wings that they just didn't know that but because they had this butterfly to gaze at and you know they could really see the beautiful of and the detail that went into this butterfly when God designed it you know and so anyway that was a gift that I sent to people over all these years of my business 
So years later, I'm like, um, with my dog, I had a Doberman and she and I were in the woods and this particular day, it was a snowy day and my girlfriend Kelly was with her dog and I was with my dog and, but we were all like, you know, going off. And then at one point we, my, my dog and I went off on one trail and my friend went off on another trail. So, um, it was all snow covered and there's a, a brown leopard butterfly right there. So pretty. Um, and, um, my, my dog like was, she's on voice command and she would just come like near me for a bit. And then she'd be like, came back up to me and she had on her nose a blue morph butterfly that was sitting on her nose and mind you like we're in the middle of total white snow like deep in winter there's no like there should be no butterflies around period and then on top of it a blue morph butterfly from the amazon rainforest showing up in maryland was like crazy and landed on my dog's nose and she was just like sitting there and then i you know, put my finger towards my dog's nose and then the butterfly jumped on my finger and I just like talked to the butterfly, said hello. And then the butterfly flew from my finger back to my dog's nose and then flew away. <laughs> and again, to me, like that's God, that, that is the Holy Spirit, like listening to who you are as a person and what like stirs your heart and what brings you joy. And, you know, and and that's God. Like, that is how God is. God is like, I'm going to bring you, you know, what is going to make your heart sing and, and bring joy to you. And it could come in the smallest package of a little butterfly landing on your nose or landing on your finger. And you're going to know that I'm the God of Israel, that I can make a butterfly that is designed to be in the, in the rainforest of the Amazon land in the middle of snow in the middle of dead winter on a dog's nose <laughs> in the middle of snow and that is God you know and that's what I mean about like you can't look at that and just be like oh that's a phenomena no like or that just didn't happen that you made that up why would I make that up you know like that happened to me that's one of my personal you know, all time favorite stories of a blue morph butterfly landing on my dog's nose and landing on my finger. It's that's God, you know, God is that talented to be able to make that happen. And, you know, I just encourage you to just open your eyes and start to pay attention to who God is for you in your life and how God really speaks to you in his Holy Spirit and are you listening to the guidance? Are you like paying attention or are you ignoring what God is saying to you because you just don't believe, you know? Um, so I encourage you to get into your belief, suspend your limited understanding and lean on God's understanding, which is all knowing and let God amaze you and inspire you and surprise you and bring you into joy. And, you know, here I am walking along this beautiful trail. And because I saw that little brochure before getting on the trail, I am noticing all these gorgeous varieties of butterflies all around me. And I just saw like a mellow yellow kind of cabbage butterfly. And again, I wouldn't have known all their names had I not looked at that little brochure. And that again is how, how God is just, he wants to bring joy to us. He wants us to pay attention that he's in control and he's got everything under control. And we just need to be patient and get into his rest. His rest means you know, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, God wants us to not be stressed out. So if you're in a state of stress, like do something, change your environment, get somewhere quiet and peaceful, and then let God bless you with the wonderment of his beautiful nature and his beautiful earth that he created. And I'm sure that 
when you slow down and you just see what is around you and you look at the intricateness of how God has put together, you know, this, this earth and the things on this earth and the different varieties of, of trees and leaves and insects and reptiles and animals and food and fruit and you know God surely had a plan and his plan was good for all of us his children the question is are we going to remember that God is actually for us that he actually wants us to come into his presence so again I encourage you whether you have done this a long time ago or last week, or yesterday, or today, I encourage you to, like, just really get into the know of who God is. Like, get to know who God is. And our Lord God, He's a good Father. He wants to bless you. And He can only do that when you're under His blessings, which means you need to be in abiding in Him and understanding that His perfect sacrifice of his only son, Jesus, Yeshua, at the cross was for the atonement of all the sin that happened in the Garden of Eden so that you and I could be free and that we could be heirs and co-heirs with with Jesus, the Christ, the one, the atonement. And, you know, as we march forward into these other days before the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, like, be mindful that, you know, like... If you don't have this understanding of who God is, like, it's an invitation. It's always an open invitation. Like, come, come, come follow me, you know? Like Jesus said, you know, um, if, if you're, um, what is it? Um, I'm going to think of it in a second. I'll come back to it. Um, but our, our job is to remember that, um, that we are to be as an example of what's possible. And that doesn't mean that we are not without problems. It does not mean that we don't have challenges that we need to go through to grow and to become a more, you know, aware, consciously aware human. I mean, that's what God is doing. He's transforming us and saying, oh, eh, 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 don't do that. You know, don't, t- don't touch that hot stove. You're going to get burnt. And, and then he's saying, when we do touch the hot stove and we do burn ourselves, he's saying, here's the aloe leaf to soothe your burn. However, if you don't want to get burned, don't touch the hot stove again. I mean, it's pretty simple. The question is, are we going to listen and pay attention you know, don't touch the hot stove. So whatever the hot stove is in your circumstances today, you know, let God lead you. And when God does lead you and warn you and talk to you and say, don't do this, instead do that, then that means that we need to take a change course of direction and have our navigation you know, GPS realigned so that we are under God's blessings because we are believing that his son at the cross is the atonement. And then we receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is our internal GPS saying, go straight. You're going, you're going great. Slow down, pick up the pace, you know, like we have to be listening in order to be in alignment and abiding And my encouragement to you is to test out what I'm saying, you know, and see what it means for yourself. And the only way to do that is for you to actually, you know, um, participate in the way that I'm inviting you to participate. Like go out on a walk, go out on a trail, Talk to God and see what comes back. 
And if a certain word keeps being repeated in your conversation with the Lord, when you get back to your car, you get back to your apartment, your house, whatever, like get out your Bible, get out your iPhone and look up like what that word is that came on your lips that God's speaking to you and look it up and find out where you are out of alignment. And if you're out of alignment, God's word is going to show you exactly where. And you just keep asking the question, where else, Lord? You know, Jeremiah this. Okay, where else? Matthew 7. Okay, where else? Genesis 3. Okay, where else? And then when you get your answer, because you've been in the word and you're allowing yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit so that you have and come to a new understanding of who God is, then you're going to be able to have the gift of discernment to know what is wheat and what is a tear. And you're going to be able to have the discernment of what is godly and saint-like and what is of the devil and of Satan. And as you begin to understand that, oh, there's beautiful deer that just ran by. So amazing. Um, just like a whole little stream of them. Um, what I'm saying is, as you begin to understand the, who God is revealing himself to be to you and what he expects of you, then you're going to be coming more, coming more and more into alignment. And I just want to point out one other thing, okay? There's a lot of people that teach that when you come to believe in Jesus, in Yeshua, and the belief at the cross and the death and the burial and the resurrection and the ascension, and you just believe on that, and then you have, you know, the righteousness in connection with Jesus and what he did at the cross to keep going forward. And that is true. And there is a second part to that. I know that we are imperfect and that each day we are dealt a certain deck of cards to deal with what we've done in our past that then trickles into our present and into our future. And there's consequences for our behavior. And at the same time, even though there are consequences for our behavior, we have the choice, okay, to come into better and more perfect alignment because Jesus said, be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus didn't say, accept being imperfect. He didn't say that. Jesus said, be perfect for my Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus didn't say, hey, you know, I'm going to make excuses because I want to go hang out over here and, and be with all these, you know, horror people and harlots and I'm going to, you know, drink unclean food and unclean drink and I'm going to do all that because I feel like it because, you know, God's my father. He doesn't care. Like Jesus never said that. What Jesus said was be perfect because my father in heaven is perfect. If God is super holy and he is, our Lord God is super holy. What did he tell to Moses? He said, you have approached my sanctuary. Take off your shoes and respect my, you know, purity. God didn't say, oh, come on, come on in, Moses. Bring your muddy shoes and, you know, your muddy, your muddiness and just do whatever you want. No, God said, get down off of, out of these dirty clothing and come to me, you know, taking off that dirt. You know, the Lord Jesus as the bridegroom, he represents himself as the spotless bride. As a spotless bride, that means that there is no sin. He is full of purity. And so we are encouraged to become like Christ, like the bride of Christ perfect, spotless, without blemish. So if somebody says to you, 
hey, you know, I know you said that you quit smoking, but, you know, here's a cigarette. Your answer when you are abiding in the Lord God and with Jesus Yeshua is going to be that you're going to have enough strength to say to the um, temptation, no, I don't want that cigarette. You, you're going to have the ability to, you know, claim what Jesus promised you, that you would become pure and spotless. And that also means that you have to take action that you're not going to choose to become muddied. And at this exact moment, I'm like walking the straight and narrow path of this greenness because there's all of this mud around. But, you know, I could be like, oh, I'm going to walk in the mud and get my shoes all dirty. No, and the Lord God has provided this tiny pathway, the straight and narrow pathway to not get all dirty, to stay in alignment with who God is as a perfect living sacrifice and that we too can become that same perfect living sacrifice. But it does require effort and action on our part and not excuses. So I hope that helps. And I encourage you as you walk your pilgrim's progress, as you walk the straight and narrow path, that you stay the course and that you believe that you can reach your destination, which is eternity, and that God will support and bless your steps because you are in agreement with what his word says, what his commandments say, who his son Jesus demonstrated who he was, and you will be at a place where you just keep believing because you keep getting evidence that keeps showing you that you have no reason to not believe because God is our gracious Father that wants to give us grace and mercy every day. And yes, he will forget our sins of the past, but that means we can't be in our sins of the past and keep expecting, you know, a blessing. We're going to be under a curse. So please, people, choose the blessings over the curse. And that means match and align your behavior with who God says he is and who God says you are in him. Because if you truly are in him, then you will have enough strength to fight the attacks of the devil and to have victory. So talk to you soon.